Um, so a couple things I want to do today, one of which is sort of lay out the, 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 the base uh, that this presentation is probably a 101 level to intermediate level. Um, I'd imagine that if you're an advanced user, you're still probably going to find something interesting about what we're going to talk about today, um, certainly in terms of how I've organized the information. Um, the other thing I want to sort of lay out is, you know, the real purpose of this for us here at Fallon, as well as even everyone else on the internet, is trying to make this whole, demystify this whole concept of social media, um, social networking. I want to actually show how it works. Uh, I want to show also just the, the literal fact that, you know, a 12-year-old could do this. You know, a 12-year-old could sign up in seconds if you have a Yahoo account. You can start up a Yahoo Live uh, channel. Um, you can start a blog in minutes. Uh, you could be broadcasting to the globe in less than 15 minutes. And, you know, the big question to think about throughout this whole hour or less than is what's the impact on our brand? You know, when c customers and people have this kind of power at their fingertips now, you know, what's our role in this process? You know, how do we in get into this dialogue in a way that's credible and invited and adding value? So, go a little bit into it. Um, for everyone, you know, we are, again, who may have just come late, uh, we're netcasting, webcasting live. Uh, you can go to the Fallon Planning blog. Uh, we have it projected here upstairs. Probably most of you have been there to the planning blog. If you haven't been, you can Google it, get your address directly there. Um, I'm, we're webcasting live on Facebook. So if you went to my Facebook account, you can click on the Y Live box and I'm live talking to you. Um, on Ning, which is a social network where people can, can, can sign up and build networks and you don't have to do the IT, you just sign up, enter in a couple codes and you've got a social network and it's on you to get the people there. Um, account planners have uh, a, a network on Ning called Account Plan Ning. So I'm on my uh, profile live, uh, as well as I'm using SlideShare, as well as I'm using Dropio. SlideShare is pretty much uh, something akin to a YouTube of, of presentation slides. So people share their slides, and you can go there and look at the presentation of the slides that you're seeing now. Um, or you can go to Dropio and SlideShare and download the presentation to your desktop. Um, so another big takeaway is the fact that at this moment, you know, as, as easy as this was for me, I'm mashing up a bunch of different applications. Uh, I would imagine by, you know, next Thursday, a lot of this stuff will be much more streamlined. Um, we're talking about what was a year ago, very fringe technology. Um, but as we're speaking now, Yahoo, you know, you're seeing, you know, major names that you know and have heard of. YouTube has announced that they're going into live video as of a couple weeks ago. So all of this stuff is going to get mainstreamed and simplified as we speak, you know, within coming months perhaps. The future is here, it's just not evenly distributed yet. Uh, that's the first slide. I typically start with a lot of these presentations. I might be over, overworking it, but I think it's very fitting for this presentation. Um, as much as some people may perceive me as being a little bit fringe or ahead, I don't really consider myself that. I'm just a guy who likes shortcuts. Uh, I'm not technically proficient. I can't program. I don't write code. can't design two squares for you, um, but I can sort of exploit and hack, you know, or bring a hacker sensibility to these kinds of applications. Um, and so people like me across the globe are taking these applications like YLive, hacking it, and finding new uses for it. Um, so, officially we're starting. The 10 trends we're going to talk about today, I've listed here social graph, social shopping, portability, live streaming, crowdsourcing, continuous partial attention, open social, privacy please, virtuality and new metrics. We're gonna go, not necessarily fast, but steady through these. I'm probably gonna take questions afterward because we have a short time, so I wanna get through the presentation and then feel free to text it to me, uh, post it, uh, and I'll answer you know, afterward. Probably won't take too many breaks as we go. So welcome to the social. Uh, I start with this quote from uh, some of the guys over at Forrester because I think it's a, a fitting uh, definition of what social media and what's happening with social media and social networking. Uh, it's really about people increasingly drawing power from one another rather than the traditional processes and outlets. Um, 
a quick overview of how this happened and how we got here, you know, in four quick slides, a history of social media. Well, firstly, technology got easier. Technology starts to work out of the box. You know, when's the last time have you read uh, an instruction manual for, for any of this kind of stuff, whether it's your camera, your iPhone, your computer, um, it's no longer necessary. Things work, and it's speeding the velocity of ideas. Secondly, People are participating, and not just you know the extreme nerd contingent, not just the rich, not just the educated. Um, this picture that I, I have here is from the One Laptop Per Child uh, uh, project. Some of you have, I've mentioned uh, in, in other presentations, um, but it's really about equalizing the playing field for computing. Uh, people in villages who don't have electricity are at night being you know the the home is being lit by computers like this. Um, people across the planet, you know, may not be broadband connected, but are connected via cell phones. Um, so everyone's increasingly participating. Next slide. Technology and social factors are converging and creating this new notion called social computing. And, you know, as we use words like no, new, let, let's be, be clear here, humans are humans. And what we do in any environment, in every environment, is connect with humans. That's what we do. We're social beings, we're herd animals, still and forevermore. Um, so even as technology changes, even as we go undersea, even as we go to space, the prime objective, what we always want to do is connect back to each other, connect to humans. Social networks are a pivotal driver and the glue of our evolving sense of self and community. A couple quick stats, and I won't make this too stat heavy. 20% of regular internet users have visited social nets in the past 30 days. Uh, social nets are accounting for nearly 7% of all U.S. <coughs> internet traffic. Um, in the U.K., uh, it overtook webmail traffic. Uh, over half of all online U.S. youth are on social nets. Uh, and over half of MySpace and Facebook increasingly is over the age of 25. So these are no longer fringe plays. It's not going anywhere. Interestingly enough, on this slide, marketers are starting to take notice. I'll stop for a second on this because this is from a poll from eMarketer uh, asking advertising executives what they consider most effective in, a, in, in building a, a, a their brands. Uh, search is number one, social networking is number two, online videos number three, podcasts, video games, mobile blogs, RSS. I think the irony and, and, and takeaway from a poll like this is it's a little bit flawed because, you know, it assumes that there's this distinct and separate you know, division between social networking and online video, and social networking and RSS feeds, and social networking and mobile. And I think what you'll start to realize, literally and figuratively as we stand here, all of that's mashing together. There is no real separation. Facebook will increasingly look like this. It won't be a static picture of me and my avatar. You will be able to see me live via my mobile, via my computer desktop. So what are some actionable opportunities uh, for leveraging the social media uh, for our brands? I'll start with this quote. Any content provided by a marketer in Facebook needs to work as social currency. Whatever story there is, it's mostly told by the users, not by the brand. And that leads me to the first trend I want to talk about, which is social graph. Social graph is probably a term that you've heard uh, mostly associated with Facebook. I think uh, they've sort of appropriated that as their, their uh, mnemonic device now. But what does that mean? What, is it, what, what does that exactly do? Um, to make it really simple, you know, your social network is all the people that you know. Your social graph can be read as a couple of different things, you know, literally as a graph form like this. You know, this is an attempt to crudely graph the social networks of the Bible, so at the centers of Jesus all the other people that he's come in contact with. I think an interesting thing about looking at a graph like this, if you know anything about the Bible, the Bible's filled with rich stories and tragedies and dramas, and this is a rather sterile representation of all of those stories. At the same time, you know, if you could imagine the Bible taking place in today's you know, uh, terms, they would be using Twitter, and they would be using Facebook status, and you would be getting updates daily in little digestible packets rather than full Bible tones of what's going on. You'd be getting it live feeds. And I think that's the brilliance of a Facebook or even a Twitter. It's making those sterile, generic-looking gray lines 
very tangible, very clear, and very approachable and digestible. What's the impact for us marketers? You know, it signals for us a, a shift away from content and programming towards storytelling and relationships. One could probably argue that we've already always been good storytellers, but I think the slight thing we have to, to take into consideration now is that people, customers, users, people are at the center of the stories, not so much us and our brands. You know, in the case of you know product launches, uh, it doesn't really work on Facebook to just say we've got Nikes and come get them; they're now available. It really has to have the person at the center of Nikes and, and Air Jordans are now available, and that person is doing something. Otherwise, it's not much really to, it won't travel fast or far in social networks. An example, ABC News uh, is partnered with Facebook, and they have an application called US Politics that I show here. On the left side, I'm outlining that, you know, they've got content pretty well down and worked out. You know, they do a 30 minute show, they've compacted it down into RSS feeds, they've compacted that down into Mobisodes, they've compacted that down into, you know, little bites and digestible, uh, you know, pills. Um, but it's not so simple as just importing that content, and that programming into Facebook. No one really needs Facebook to get an RSS update of the headlines. And one of the examples I'm showing here of how ABC News is adapting uh, for this environment is, you know, you look at my news feed, it's, I key took the position, yes, a woman can be an effective president, for instance, or I key took the position, yes, we should develop more alternative energy sources. So it's how our key is interacting with the headlines, not just the headlines. There's plenty of outlets that you can get those headlines. You can get them on your, on your, on your iPhone, you can get them everywhere, you can get them on RSS feeds. That's not the real purpose of a social network. Social network is to put me at the center of the headlines, put me at the center of products and brands and, and interactions, and we're all co-creating stories now. Implications for the social graph? Tell stories. Um, but more so, we have to enable people you know, to co-create in these stories with us. Second trend I want to talk about is social shopping. I touched on it a little bit. I used this uh, device from a friend on Facebook recently. Uh, she signed up for Nordstrom Fashion Status. And it tells us her status today. Uh, comfy and cute, what I'm wearing. Uh, brands like H&M, Jeffrey, Nadri. So this gives you a little bit of a clue on how you know stores, how brands can engage in these social networks. It puts the user at the center of the story, uh, not just the brands. There are 3.5 billion online conversations a day. Peer reviews are a big, significant portion of this. And I don't think this is news for any of us. Amazon, you know, if you look back at, at, the, at their playbook, they've mined their success by leveraging a basic core human truth, and that is even purchasing decisions aren't separated or divorced from you know, the social engagement and social influence of others. Um, so from the customer discussions, creating your own reviews, inviting you to tell a friend and enabling that, um, inviting you to add to the tags, um, seeing the reactions, even talking with the authors increasingly or new features, um, these are how they've been leveraging that basic human truth again. Shopping apps like uh, Facebook's visual, uh, visual bookshelf, I like, there are many others. Um, they're extending this shopping antenna uh, throughout the social fabric of, of all my expert friends. You know, in this example, I'm using a visual bookshelf. Visual bookshelf allows you to enter in all the books you're reading, all the books you'd like to read, all the books you've already reviewed. And what it's automatically doing is trolling all my networks and telling me, hey, we see that you're debating, and in, ca in the case of this email I'm showing you, it seems that you're debating reading this book. 